How did these nations serve their gods? I want to do the same. These are words that should never cross our lips. You and I were created by Adonai, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because of that, Jewish or not, we have an inner knowing that points to him. We know that there should be a God. We know that there should be such a thing as good. We know there must have been a beginning, but there must have been something or someone before the beginning. And if you picture the end, you must also ask yourself, what happens after the end? When we dive deep into the human mind, even there we find evidence of our design and our designer. Have you ever heard someone say, my boss cheated me and that's not right? How do they know that's not right? If we were just piles of goo, what does the movement of goo from one goo to another matter? <laughs> it's because we're not goo. We were created by the one true God. Every culture around the globe has a desire to find God. It's built into us. Even the men of Athens, whom Paul spoke to, had an unknown God whom they were worshiping in ignorance. And the heavens declare the glory of God. The dome of the sky speaks the works of his hands. His character is visible for all the world to learn of him. Does that mean that every culture found him? No. Revelations 12.9 calls our adversary the deceiver of the whole world. And Titus 3.3, speaking of people before they were delivered by God, says, For at one time we too were foolish and disobedient, deceived and enslaved by a variety of passions and pleasures. If our old cultures were deceived and enslaved by a variety of passions and pleasures and under the rule of the deceiver of the whole world, does that sound like all those cultures would know how to find and worship God correctly? The devil often takes truth and twists it, perverting it into something it's not. Uh, you think about um, Yeshua in uh, Luke 14, 26, says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, his mother, his wife, his children, his brothers and his sisters, yes, and his own life besides, he cannot be my disciple, my Talmud. This hate is a comparison word in comparison to the great love we have for Yeshua. Our love for our family doesn't even aspire to the same scale. If Yeshua were to ask us to do something and our family forbade us from it, we wouldn't even hesitate to follow Yeshua. We don't have two masters, we have only him. But that concept, that true concept of being willing to give up everything for the one true God was perverted by evil cultures. An example of this is addressed in this Parsha with the burning of people. God seems pretty horrified that they would do that for their made up gods, and he's equally horrified by the idea that his precious Israel could try out that worship style in the future. A lot of cultures with foreign gods have worship practices that mix truth, like giving up everything for God, with some sort of perversion, like what these people were doing. A slavery to a variety of passions and pleasures that our flesh could find appealing, not the burning one, but others. <laughs> Which means if you're not careful, some of these other worship practices could look cool to you with some of the things they mix into it. But the Torah reminds us that we are not supposed to serve other gods, nor are we supposed to borrow from their practices to serve our own God. So how do we know what is right? We search the Tanakh every day to test the things we hear, like the Bereans did in Acts chapter 17. We test our ideas, we test what others tell us, we test what we hear in the spirit realm. Psalm 19 says, the Torah of Adonai is perfect restoring the inner person. The instruction of Adonai is sure, making wise the thoughtless. The precepts of Adonai are right, rejoicing the heart. The mitzvah of Adonai is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Adonai is clean, enduring forever. The rulings of Adonai are true, they are righteous altogether. More desirable than gold, than much fine gold, also sweeter than honey or drippings from the honeycomb. Through them your servant is warned, in obeying them there is great reward. His Torah is our milk. It is our first foods. It helps us grow in the right way so that we have the maturity to move on to eating meat, the greater spiritual things. It warns us so that we aren't deceived into mixing abominations into our worship or transgressing his commands with the best intentions. It also helps us to truly know our great creator, who we have all been designed to seek and love since before we were born. Shabbat Shalom.